Well, if the first game away from home this season was miserable, the second game away was magnificent. Hello everybody and welcome back to another review of this Oxford United season. After beating Carlisle 1-0 at the weekend to get our first win of the season, United faced a difficult week with back-to-back -back trips against two of the sides going to be pushing promotion this season, and that is Derby and Barnsley. We start with Derby. What can Liam Manning's side do against one of these promotion-chasing sides? Well, I tell you. I tell you. A result we haven't seen for a while. A performance, also probably, that we haven't seen for a while. And it ended with a fantastic Oxford United away win. It finished Derby County 1, Oxford United all the players played their part in this game, but Oxford United have a new hero, but uh, we'll get into all of that in a little bit. We'll go over the team news, we'll go over the game, and then I'll give my final thoughts. Um, there's not going to be any player ratings this time. I know, I know, calm down, but it's difficult for me to do them on the midweek games. But if you can, hit like on the video. That helps me out so much. Again, I'm on the march to a 1,000 subs. You can help me get there. Be part of people that help me get there and also if you like the content think about subscribing to the channel as well but that's enough shilling out of the way let's jump in to some team news two changes for Liam Manning from the side that beat Carlo at the weekend um, Josh McEachran and Ruben Rodriguez dropped to the bench Tyler Goodrum Marcus McGuane come into the side Goodrum went out wide it meant Billy Bowden switched into like the number 10 role in behind Mark Harris up front not really too bothered about those changes uh, I think more to do with like fitness and energy in the side than anything else Else. And um, again, no Josh Murphy on the bench. Moving on to the Rams then, it is going to be a 3-5-2 for Port Warren's Derby side. And they were unchanged from their very good 3-0 win over Burton Albion. Louis Sibley scored two goals against Oxford in the game at the Kassam last season. And Tom Barkhusen are the notable absentees from this side through injury. Um, Ex-United defender Curtis Nelson in defence. And you've got Max Bird and Colla Hurahan in midfield who both had excellent games against the Brewers. And you look at this lineup with Collins, Mendes, Lang up front. Looks to be a formidable front too. And plenty of players that can come off the bench and make a difference. Derby County were my favourites or are my favourites to win the league. You can check out my League One predictions video in the top corner now so as I said I was very interested to see how Oxford would line up and match up against one of the best better best one of the better sides in the league and it was a good game it was a high tempo game I mean maybe not the best quality but I, I thought it was a, a very very entertaining game of football to watch Derby fans you probably have a different perspective I am sure but straight from the kickoff Derby set the tone with a really direct routine from the from the kickoff which put took Oxford off guard and it nearly paid dividends because Derby got a couple of early corners created a chance from it and really cash in had a free header and should have done better but Oxford went straight up the other end after two minutes a night very nice move and a nice little flick by Billy Bowden got Harris into the edge of the box but he skewed his chance well wide don't worry he gets better but yeah, I mean, I put down here it was a scrappy game, but it was a scrappy game played at a pretty good tempo. It was, it was very, very well contested by both sides. Derby not really looking to press Oxford at all. Happy to let the defence move it around and just kind of put pressure on us when we got into their half. Kind of like a basketball half-court press, if you like. And then obviously when they got the ball, turned it over, looked to counter very, very quickly. 16 minutes on the clock, and Oxford had a very nice move with Sam Long getting forward, played in Marcus Brown on the right side. It was a nice real move from Oxford United from the uh, left to right and it got Brown in with a shot on goal and he forced Wildsmith into a decent save. A lot of chances in this game came from the teams making mistakes. I do think Derby made more mistakes in possession than Oxford did and Oxford really did capitalise on the 21st minute. It was um, the ball just burst forward really and, and Tyler Goodrum looked like he was through on goal. He looked like he was going to get away but Corey Smith did brilliantly well to get back and snuff out of the chance and then D Joe Ward for Derby did go off injured after after that incident. Referee, referee, referee. I don't like to bash on referees too much, but I'm sure both sets of fans are going to be um, miffed at some of the decisions he made. Let's just leave it at that. 25 minutes, it did look like uh, Mark Harris was dragged down in the box 
but nothing was given. And Oxford didn't really need to moan about it too much because six minutes later, they took the lead in this game. And it was Curtis Nelson still probably thinking he plays for Oxford, who tried to pass the ball out of defence, gives it straight to Cameron Brannigan. Bit of a shocker from old Kurt there. And uh, Branners drives forward to the edge of the box, plays it into Harris, and Harris on his right peg blasted it into the top corner. United ahead, and I think deserved lead for Oxford at that point. But Derby were never going to go quietly in this game, were they? And, and the crowd started to get a little bit more angry, more on the players' back. You did see more urgency from the Derby players. And, and they were at their best, really, when they were bombarding the ball into the box and getting balls in from set pieces. And Derby did cy- recycle the ball well from a set piece. And Cashin did force Beadle into a into a good tip over and it almost was like a barrage of corners at times from this derby attack and it was another corner which caused problems and Bradley had a free header again I think maybe he was challenged on it but I thought it looked like it clipped the edge of the post but it did just go just wide and Oxford breathed a sigh of relief to go in leading 1-0 at half time haven't been in this position too often um, in well, certainly over the last, in this year's calendar year, hardly at all to be 1-0 up um, against anyone, but 1-0 up against a good side. But again, I thought they played well, and I thought it was a deserved lead. Some of the passing from the Oxford player was really good. I think he definitely saw a different contrast in play with Oxford trying to pass their way through the first derby, much more direct and looking to like have more joy from crosses and corner kicks. But I thought Oxford's um, pressing was pretty decent as well. But in these games we've had against... Um, well, anyone really, but certainly the top sides again. We played okay in a few of them, but we've lacked that cutting edge and we really needed a spark. And yes, Sparky is the one who provided it with that little bit of quality. Nervy second half coming up. But for large parts of this second half, Oxford gave as good as they got, really. And it was an early um, overhead kick from Billy Bowden, who I thought had a really good game. Won a corner again after a nice Oxford United move. Derby were obviously causing problems themselves. And Oxford were struggling to clear their lines at times, which didn't help and didn't help with the nerves, I can tell you. But then Oxford did win a ball again off Derby in a dangerous area. And Harris looked like he was going to be able to run through on goal. But he just couldn't bear down on goal without players getting back. He did give it to Bowden. Again, it went a little bit under Bow's feet. And he ended up dragging a shot just wide. Again, you're just thinking, we need this second goal. You knew we needed this second goal. And, and Derby were doing their best to give us a helping hand. They kept giving the ball away in difficult areas. And Oxford were able to counter-attack on them. Brown was getting it down the right-hand side. But the Derby defender get, got back and made an amazing challenge. And then another amazing counter-attack from Oxford. It didn't end up with a goal. You're getting a little bit frustrated here. But Marcus Brown, untouchable at times down that right-hand side. He pulled it back to Bowden. He did well to create space but his shot was well saved by Wildsmith but on 71 minutes Oxford got that decisive goal they went 2-0 up in this game dreamland for Oxford United and they come forward it was a driving run forward from Marcus McGrain again Oxford winning the ball back in a good area meant McGuane could drive forward to the edge of the box. He gave it to Rodriguez, who I thought looked quite lively when he came on again. He played it to the edge of the box where Harris was able to come onto it with a calm finish from the edge of the box into the bottom corner. 2-0 Oxford United. Obviously, Derby fans getting very, very impatient. But Derby were still searching for a lifeline, searching for anything, any sort of thing they can grab onto to get themselves back into this game. And they looked dangerous all night from crosses. And there were times where Beadle did not look good under a couple of them. There was He made a mess of one cross. A couple of minutes later, he made a mess of another cross both times. Uh, got away with it the first time a foul not given and Long was able to clear it over the bar second time luckily for him the referee gave a foul game tipped towards the 19 you're kind of thinking we're going to see this one out but this game was not done no it was just never it was never going to be 2-0 you felt Derby were always going to get a goal in this one with injury time you, you knew it was going to be kind of still be nervy right to the very end and Derby on 87th minute got back into the game a long throw into the box and this time Oxford don't deal with it and it's able to bounce right the way through to Waghorn and Waghorn delivered a cracking finish into the bottom corner really on the volley difficult finish to execute and he executed it brilliantly Derby back in the game Grandstand finish, seven minutes of injury time Derby got another barrage of corners in injury time but they just could not get that decisive shot on goal or chance on goal or Oxford just to manage to shut the door on them or the ref gave us a nice call. Um, but yeah, it was certainly nervy and, and Derby 
on another day easily could have got two or three goals from these set pieces they created a, a late break for Oxford United by Odonka and Rodriguez and really that should have resulted in a shot and goal but Odonka did really well played in Rodriguez but he just he got fouled on the edge of the box so it did a good job of wasting time but really they should have done better seven minutes of injury time successfully negotiated Oxford United win on the road at Derby. Not many of you were expecting this at the start of the week. People were looking at these runner fixtures thinking if we get a point, that'll be decent. But we've gone to Derby and we've got a cracking result. Time for my final thoughts now. I'll start with the visitors. And look, Derby fans, let me know how you feel about your style of play. Because I'm a biased Oxford United fan and I'm saying that, yeah, but I thought we played much better football the new guys today um take away refereeing decisions and you know you're going to say ref helped us there's a couple of decisions that could have gone our way as well like for example a, a pull back on odonka from a guy who's already on a booking doesn't get a second yellow but anyway um yeah just let me know about your style of play because it, it, it's very very direct and it's very much just bombard the penalty area and it, i mean paul warren's known for playing this style and he's had success with it but how do you feel about it do you feel that's going to be enough to get you up and promoted in this league or do you need a little bit more uh quality and, and nuance if you like coming through the midfield and the wide areas because it did feel like it was just a battering ram over and over again it's going to be successful, but just how successful do you think it's going to be? My Oxford United fans, while this is a result we've been waiting for for a long, long time, let's not start looking about what it means in terms of where we're going to finish in the season. Let's just enjoy the fact that we've started the season after a bad week. We've started the second week of the season really well with two, a good win at home and an excellent win on the road. It's starting to come together now. The, the, the players look a lot more, it looks a lot more cohesive. Stefan Negru at the back again, immense. Uh, Moore looks so much more solid alongside him. Uh, Beadle's still a few nervy moments, but I'm sure he's going to improve. Well, I thought generally to a man, I thought Oxygen United battled hard today. The pressing was really good as well. The way they, they worked so hard to sort of get, stop Derby from being able to be comfortable in possession at all. And for me, great performance and a great Oxford United win. But let me know your thoughts down below, Oxford fans and Derby fans as well. I'm really always very curious to hear what your thoughts are on the game. And um, yeah, we, we, you feel free to talk about play acting and decisions and stuff like that. All, all, all that sort of stuff that goes on. But every side does it. So don't be surprised if a side is 2-1 up at your ground, Derby, and we start trying to waste time a little bit. That'll do it for this review. No review of the Barnsley game. I'm off on holiday. It is my wedding anniversary on Saturday. So no review, I am afraid. I'm sure you're all going to be in floods of tears for that one. But thank you very much for watching. I will be back probably the week, not this weekend, next weekend for the home game against Charlton.